Adventures. My name is Lisa Keegan and today we are steaming a pudding in our Thermomix. Have you done that yet? Have you steamed a pudding? It is the most delicate, fluffy, soft, moist dessert you'll ever try. Now you can do cakes as well, so if you don't have an oven, a Thermomix will certainly help you as well. But today I'm going to show you this awesome chocolate steamed pudding, which also used to feature in a cooking class I used to run in my home years ago. So I can't wait to show you today. So some of you should have done this. I know that you guys have made it before, but let's get started. Really simple, okay? Now it says generously grease a dish to start off with. Now I use a Pyrex dish. It is a... I'll have to work out what size that is for you. I've greased it because it's a bit hard to read what it is. But anyway, I've greased that ready to go. Okay, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to fill that entirely. It actually might be a bit bigger than that. We'll see how we go. So you do need to grease something well and set it aside. It's going to sit in your aroma. So it needs to be heat safe. Then we're going to put it into our Thermomix. It says 100 grams of dark chocolate pellets. Now, I've got my favorite 85% uh, dark leaf chocolate here. So I'm just going to put that into it. And it's not going to be 100 grams because it's already got some eaten off the top. So it is what it is. In it goes. Little tip, don't lose the uh, oil foiling. doesn't taste too good if you do that. So in that goes. I'll just break that bit up. Okay, in with the dark chocolate, you can see it's 80 grams. Now it's going to get us to grate that down with usually some, excuse me, I'm just finding my measuring cup, usually with some orange. I don't have orange today. I'm going to skip it out. So just leave it out if you want to. So it's going to just be an orange pudding today. Um, on with the lid and the measuring cup. And we're going to chop it for 10 seconds, speed 10. Off that goes to do its chop. <laughs> the sides now my bowl was slightly damp so it may actually have stuck to the sides I'm not too worried on that though okay there you go you can see it's a little bit stuck not too bad though now it's got 80 grams of um, unsalted butter diced so here's my unsalted butter just see how much I need oh there we go that'll do and then we go next and caster sugar now by the way um, this can be made on any model thermomix okay just make sure your beautiful dish that you're steaming it in can fit in your aroma so cast the sugar, I will be using raw sugar up the back here and I'm going to actually cut that down to 100 grams because I don't like putting that much sugar in. Um, it may make it slightly denser, but I don't mind. Okay, totally up to you there. All right, some milk. Now I am actually going to use some buttermilk from cheese making. Okay, so I've been doing, uh, this is cultured buttermilk left over from my cheese making course. If you haven't seen my cheese making course, check it out the link i will put above okay so check actually it'll be on oh, that side so check that out if you want to learn how to make amazing cheeses in your thermomix and be confident in that so 80 grams of milk nearly there that'll do and then next up we've got into the machine 10 grams of cocoa powder so that's over here just ordinary cocoa powder is fine might use a spoon. 10 grams. It's actually not that much, really. Is that a tablespoon? Well, a tablespoon is a little heavier than that. There you go. And now on with the lid, and we're going to blitz this down. So let's combine it together. I love baking with my Thermomix. It is so clean and easy. It's actually also not just blitzing it down. I should have said the wrong thing. It's melting the chocolate. So it's 80 degrees, two minutes, speed one. So I'll come back in two minutes, and I'll take you through the next steps. I'll see you shortly. Okay, so that's done that time, and you see it's quite warm. Scrape down the sides of the bowl with the spatula. That's to get the rest of that melted chocolate included in the mix, or the rest of the chocolate to be melted more so. So we'll just give that a quick scrape down. It smells amazing. I'm just going to push off the little centerpiece. I'm going to push off to the sides. The There's a bit of sugar that was stuck there. You could see that. Instead of the measuring cup, and now it's just going to do another two minutes. Ooh, dropping things. Two minutes at 80 degrees to finish that melting process. Next up, you're going to need, it says to put oranges around the outside. Now, I don't have oranges, so I'm going to skip that out. So just leave it out if you don't have it. How cool is that? But what we're going to do instead is we're going to get our next lot of ingredients ready, especially if you're cooking along to this. 
So you need a couple of eggs, you need self-raising flour. Now today I'm making it gluten-free. So I'm using my gluten-free plain, I'm gonna use my baking powder to actually make this self-raising flour and gluten-free at the same time. So how cool is that? So if you are gluten-free, you can cook this recipe and know that it's all okay. I do love steaming things like this in the Thermomix because it actually means I don't need to turn on my oven, okay? Which means the house doesn't get as warm and it means that it's just more efficient, really. There's other things I can be doing as well. So that's pretty cool. Now, I'm actually gonna sk skip through this step because you guys know that I love being uh, efficient and fast. And wait for it. I'm gonna wait for it to unlock the bowl. Very cool safety feature. Uh, here's our self raising flour. So it's got 150 grams. So I'm going to put about 140 grams of the plain flour in, and then I'm going to put um, one and a half teaspoons. So if you don't know that rule of thumb yet, it's for every 100 grams, it's one teaspoon, okay, of baking powder. Uh, so I want one and a half, or just short of. Again, Thermomix is super generous. It really close enough is good enough. I do find. So that's in there now. Next up is a pinch of salt. It's up the back here. The salt brings out the sweetness, just in case you didn't know. That's why you'll find salt in so many different things. Uh, some medium eggs. Thanks to our chookies, we've got these. And then, I think we might be done. Let's have a look. On with the lid, let's finish this off. Now, there is a chocolate sauce to go with this recipe. However, I'm not gonna make chocolate sauce. For those of you cooking along, 20 seconds, uh, speed four. I'm actually going to make custard later to serve with it. So, I'm not gonna do the sauce today. This is about the Verona. Now, I did boil the jug. You'll see this recipe calls for boiled water. I'll just wait for this step to stop. Now, it did call for boiled water. It does want to start with a hot Verona temperature. And that's because if you think about your oven, when you do your baking with your oven, you're putting it into an already hot oven. We want to do the same with our Verona. We want to be steaming it on an already hot space. So mine's cooled a little bit because I've come in here to film with you guys. But if you are doing this now, now's the time to put that jug on. So finish with a spatula by hand if required. So we can see that there's a bit of stuff stuck up the side. You may not have that same stickiness up the side if you've got uh, normal plain flour or normal self-raising, sorry, more so because you'll find with that, it's not as floaty. The arrowroot is quite floaty in this, this flour mix. So just give it a quick mix through. How amazing does that look? My goodness, look at that. Does that not look beautiful or what? All right, I'm guessing it's gonna tell me to put it into the prepared basin. All right, so let's put that on now. So in it goes. We do need to make sure it's got enough room to rise. It's gonna rise another half. Generally speaking, um, when you put self-raising flour into a recipe, even if you're making it like we did today with the, the baking powder, you need to allow for an extra half. Oh, there's some stuff that didn't mix through. Oh well, should have mixed that through a bit better by hand at the end. You do have to make sure you don't over mix it. So the reason it actually asked you to over um, hand do it at the end was because if you over beat a mixture, it actually gets dense and hard and we don't want it dense, especially not when we're cooking with steam. So that's nearly empty now. Now ordinarily I would rinse this out and start with a, a nice cleanish bowl, but I'm not near my sink and I'm on a video with you guys. So we're just going to instead today put the water into it once I get this out and steam it with the dirty bowl. Now the advantage to cleaning it out is obviously you end up with a clean bowl at the end. Otherwise mine's gonna end up kind of a semi-cooked bowl in there, but that's okay. Here's my beautiful mix back here. Let me get a bit closer for you guys. Okay, I'm just gonna flatten it out a little bit. It does really remind me of a pudding or a cake mix. It is that really shiny, thick kind of stuff. Now it does say to cover with grease-proof paper. Now I'm gonna cover it with my very cool wrap. I've got this, these, and you've seen me use them, particularly when I was on the road in the caravan. I've actually just redug them out again because I am fed up with using Glad Wrap. I really detest the fact that it's so single use. These, I'm gonna put a link below, okay? So I do have an affiliate account with these guys and you can get these awesome uh, wraps and they double as baking paper, they can go in the oven, they can, and it's like silicon. So it's usable, it's, you just wash it in a hot soapy sink when you're done. I've had these, for probably three or four years. 
There's three different sizes I've got, a really big one, a medium, and this is the small, and they are just fantastic. So I'm gonna drop this on top, like so. Okay, now what that does is it's gonna keep the drips of humidity out of there. All right, now ideally I probably should have sprayed it or wiped it down, but just it is what it is on camera. Okay, if you've got time, spray it, because then it won't stick to it. So it says cover with a little foil uh, to and poke something up in the middle to stop it pooling on there. This will be fine as it is, okay? Secure, secure the basin lid with a kitchen string uh, and then put it in the Varoma. So you might want to secure something around here. I find this can just sit here perfectly fine. Worst case scenario is you get some drips of water off the lid of your Varoma sitting on the top here and then obviously that presses down on your dish. No big deal. And if you didn't have a cover, I'm going to tell you as well, no big deal. I've done it many of the times and all that happens is you end up with a kind of a wet spot in the centre where it's a different colour, it's a little bit paler. Again, you're going to flip this upside down and present it on the dish, you won't notice it anyway. So don't get too stressed about that. However, these things worth their weight in gold. Okay, I'll link them below. So I'm going to put that on top. Now I'm going to put into the machine uh, some boiling water. So it's 1.4 litres or 1,400 grams. I won't have that much because my jug is only one litre. Fun fact of the day, we don't uh, actually drink cup of tea, we drink coffee and hubby's got a coffee machine. So we actually very rarely, um, I probably should need some more, but I'll put some more in later. So we very rarely use our jug, hence the reason we have a small jug. So let's go on with the Varoma. And this on top, and it's got 90 minutes. Now that's the reason it's asking for the 1.4. Okay, remember, we need one and a half litres for one and a half hours of steaming. And they're going a little bit short on the amount, but that's okay. Close enough. So remember that's our little rule of thumb there. So I will come back, I'm gonna boil the jug and I'll top that up off camera so that I do have enough because mine will only be one and, was it 1.2? So let's spin this up and pretty much in an hour and a half's time, gonna have the most amazing, amazing pudding. I've got no other words, melt in your mouth pudding, ready to serve with whatever you want. Tonight it'll be custard for us, but it might be the beautiful sauce, it might be with cream, it might be with slices um, of fruit, it might even be with something like a beautiful coolie or something like that. There's so many ways that you can use this. So if you ever find yourself without an oven, when you've got a Thermomix on the bench, you don't have to go buy an oven straight away. You can still make, you can steam breads, you can steam puddings, you can steam muffins. The only muffins that don't work so well and it's a more cosmetic than anything else are the pale colored ones because obviously in an oven it's cooking with dry heat. So dry heat, you get a nice crispy crust on it and it goes brown a little bit. When you're steaming, you don't get that crispiness to it. So that's the only probably downside you could say to making things like muffins that are maybe vanilla or something in the Thermomix. Anyway, guys, I hope you've got some hints and tips today for this. Um, can't wait to show you the final product soon. Well, please reach out if I can support you in any way regarding a Thermomix. If you've got questions about recipes, I hope I'm inspiring you to dig this out of the cupboard and put it to good use with your Thermomix. It is a really handy tool to use with your Thermomix, whether it being to layer up like you've seen so far with veggies and things like that and meats, or whether it's for puddings. Um, I hope you're enjoying it. Okay, so I look forward to seeing you.